Welcome to another episode of the Wandering Watercolor. Thank you for joining me again. Today we are working on the eighth, seven or eighth page of the Quaint Scenery、uh, Watercolor Coloring Book. And it's, it's the seventh page. I'm pretty sure it's the seventh page.、Um, and I, I've been away for a little bit.、Uh, sorry for not uploading anything for the last two weeks, but I, I went in and I got married. So, and we're also kind of like doing some、uh, changes here in the studio. Sorry for the mess in the background.、Uh, you'll see some changes in the coming weeks.、Um, so, we're just going to go right into the next page that we're painting for the paint along tutorial. If you didn't buy the book and you want to purchase it, it's in the description of the video. And if you don't want to purchase it, that's fine too. You could just pause the image that we are painting today, just kind of draw it out, sketch it out. And then continue painting along with us、um, when you're done drawing it. So let's go over to the drawing table. This is the image.、Um, so, this is the palette that I will be using. It's the same palette. If you bought it for me, this is the same palette. It comes with a, a little brush and all of the、um, little half pans with the paint in them. They have magnets on them, so you can rearrange them however you want, or you can put them on top, like I've done over here. And、uh, this one's one short, so I'm just using it as an example,、um, kind of like a display. But there's 10 colors in there. I always seem to have problems with the brown color for some reason, because、um, I mix all of my own colors、uh, with my own pigments and gum arabic and glycerin. So it seems to,、uh, the brown is always the one that gives me trouble. But anyway, so you have your palette. You can use any palette, it doesn't have to be mine.、Um, and then the brush, I have a little. A、uh, cup on the side here with water so I don't have to use and change the reservoir all the time. And there's also a little soap dish that I use for mixing my colors. Any plate, any porcelain plate will work just fine. These are non toxic, you can wash them right off.、Um, they're not going to stain anything if it's porcelain or glass.、Um, I prefer white porcelain just because it's easier to see the colors that you're mixing. And then I always recommend having a, a rag. Just for、um, well, a lot of reasons, and a、uh, scrap piece of paper so you can mix colors on. And this is the image that we will be painting today.、Um, when I originally painted this, it was done with the same exact palette, so should be no problems getting this mixed today. I'm gonna leave this over here to the sides so I can kind of look at it, and then let's. Dive right in. So, the first thing we'll do is I always end up getting green in my yellow for some reason. So, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. Both of the yellows kind of messy. I've been thinking about switching up my palette a little bit, but I'll probably keep it the same. For the next month or two, maybe maybe the beginning of next year, I'll switch it up.、Um, sometimes it's hard to find affordable pigments to mix all of these and make them at an affordable price. So I'm, I'm trying to make everything more affordable but maintain the quality. So I'm kind of experimenting with different recipes. But anyway, so we're gonna get this yellow. I'm just gonna mix a bunch of it here, get a bunch of water. So it's nice and、uh, transparent. And then we're gonna grab the then we're gonna grab the brown. And then just gonna throw that right in there. And that's that's about it. We actually don't want any more than that. We actually might throw a little bit of the white in here. Get kind of like a almost like a pastel building color. I would say that that's. Pretty much fine. So,、uh, with this one, we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start right here. There's a little there's a little spot right here in the very first, it's kind of like a bar. I'm just gonna go right there and then skip one and then the one after that. Skip one, the one after that. Feel free to either slow down or pause the video at any point. Don't feel like you have to rush. 
there's just a, this image has a lot going on in it so I'm gonna go a little faster um, to feel, yeah so don't don't worry if you need to pause or slow down anything feel free to go right ahead and do that okay and then right here and then here I'm just kind of skipping every bar and going to the next one with the coloring and up here and here okay then here we're just gonna go right on the outside of this bar like that and then just color all that in and then when we get down here there's this brick here go down and fall along right here and then color this in Okay, so we got all that and that based down here and up here and then I'm gonna color this in and here as well up here or I should say right next to it and kind of going in coloring in the color of the building and some of the spaces um, I'm just going over details because the details themselves will be dark so it's okay to kind of move in some of the lines and even if you go outside of the lines in some areas don't don't worry about it don't it's not it's not a big deal honestly it'll st we'll still make it look good don't worry go right there right there and right here right up here around the window and then underneath the roof we'll definitely be altering a lot of these colors so far so good though and next we're gonna go and down here it's actually we're just gonna color all of this in we're gonna leave this up here and just color all of this in and then this block right here the one next to it gonna leave this right here put right here next to it gonna leave these windows alone gonna go right here paint the roof edge all of this this can be painted these windows will be a much darker color so don't worry about leaving them or painting right over them because when we add in the darker color um, you'll be able to see the definition on top of the yellow here we'll go like this go like this and then here underneath the roof again same thing with these windows we will just paint right over them and then this side, this side, and all over here. Also going to put a little bit of yellow up here and going like that. And all of this, avoiding the, sh the little garden shrub here that's coming out of the window basket okay all of these these lines you could just paint right right over them no need to stress out about them and same with all of this down here we are just gonna paint right over we're gonna leave this door alone but we'll paint over the rest right here 
and this is a window pane that we're just gonna leave or a window cover we're just gonna leave that like that paint yellow here and here and go right there Paint all of these. This right here inside of the window, um, or the, the little alcove for the window, the little cutout, paint that as well. We will darken it later on, but that's easy to do once the base flat wash is done. So all of this. All these bricks right here. This basket, we'll leave it alone and avoid getting the yellow in the shrubs. But as always, if you do end up getting some color in a spot where it's not meant to go, it's not the end of the world. It's, it's easily fixable. Go right here. There's a wire that will color like a bluish gray um, we're just kind of avoiding it, but again, if it gets in, no worries. Okay, so we got the flat wash in. I'm going to pick up this little, there was a little wet spot right there. See, that kind of got in a little bit where it wasn't supposed to, like into the bush or the little uh, garden uh, pot. That's okay. So we have a nice flat wash over the all of the buildings all of the brick basically and it'll dry pretty quickly but while it's drying we can move on to the pavement um, or the these cobblestone path for that one we do need to make it get our reference here it needs to be kind of like a grayish, almost like a grayish yellowish. So what we'll do is we will add a little bit of this green into our yellow. So that's looking, that's looking good so far. We'll add a little bit of brown, get a brown over here. Okay, that's looking fine we'll dilute it with a little more water and we'll grab a little bit of the dark blue right here and that's close it's getting closer maybe a little more a little more water those are basically the colors that we're playing with to mix the pavement here it's dark blue yellow and brown and you're just kind of like adjusting between those three to, to get this color right here and obviously plenty of water because we want it to be fairly transparent so when we lay down the color it won't be it won't be so strong it'll be more desaturated put a little more blue and a little more water and I would say that that's probably right around the color that we want and with this we're, we're basically laying down one flat wash and we're doing it in a big stroke so it's not because we're not trying to layer any of it we don't want to make any parts of the flat wash darker than the other so we're just going to go in one big swoop we'll go like that like that and just lay it all down just like that and you can even get some just water just plain water and just grab that and just lay that on It looks a little dark, but it'll dry much lighter. So that's fine. So at least we have a base to work off of when we start adding in shadows. Yeah, that looks, 
It's interesting to stop and look at it because you can see how it starts um, breaking up the different parts of the the painting. You can see, you can you can tell what what the different shapes are a lot better now that it's all kind of like separated by the color. Okay, so next we will go ahead and mix. Um, it's going to be kind of like a blue green gray, um, which is going to be what's going to line all of the basically all the wooden panels like the these vertical stripes these uh panels around the windows the windows themselves the wooden parts of them the roofs all of them are going to be the same kind of like um grayish bluish it's like a blue green blue green gray is what we're going for basically So this is pretty good right here. I'm gonna add some more water because we want to keep it transparent. Add more blue. And then we'll add a little more brown. Because the brown really helps neutralize the blue and make it look more gray. But I think I put, a, I put in a little bit too much brown. So I'm going to go back for the blue. And see, you can tell how it kind of starts looking more gray. So this is pretty good, except I want it to be a little more on the blue side. So I'm going to grab the lighter blue. And just mix that in. And mix it in nice and thoroughly and grab some more water if you need to so that's pretty good that's pretty much exactly the color that I need and we'll go right in now we're gonna go well this whole piece right here all of this is oops see I kind of got out of the line a little bit go in and right there okay and it looks a little dark don't worry it, it will dry lighter it will dry lighter especially on this building on this side it's okay if it's a little darker because this building is actually all in in shadow um so that'll work to our advantage and then just kind of going in like that all these vertical stripes that are the wood panels for the building and then just kind of go in slowly you don't have to rush going around there's four little squares in here um, you can actually just paint over them it doesn't matter if you leave them just like these little uh, panels that's all gonna be glass but there's no light on the inside so when we paint them they'll be completely black so if you get into the squares it's not a big deal because when we paint over them it'll look uh, it'll look accurate so all of these stripes and then this right here this support that's built right here all of this is just the blue gray painting all that in 
Okay, and then down here. And then all of these. Up here. And it's actually, you know what? We don't even worry about it. Just paint all over. All over it. There's no point in uh, worrying about keeping out of the squares since they're all just going to be painted really dark anyway. Uh, might as well just save ourselves some time <laughs> and then just go in. Sometimes I got to remind myself that when I'm painting is I'm painting in layers. So just think what can be painted over and, and what you will be painting over. So this will work just fine here. Don't worry about it. Might as well, since... Work smarter, not harder, right? Okay, so all of these, we got all that. The next thing is... All of these are going to be brown, so we'll leave those. But over here, we have... This roof, the rooftop here. And then I'm going to get some water, kind of dilute it a little bit as we shift over to the next building. This, this again, same concept. You can just paint all over these little squares. That's fine. All of this up here, the roof, this. This is going to be brown, so we'll leave that. But up here, all of this is brown, or I'm sorry, gray same color just a little more diluted so it's when it dries it'll be lighter and then this is also gray paint this gray there's actually a pipe that comes down here that is the same grayish color I'm gonna bring that all the way down all the way down all the way down here. That's fine. And then I'm gonna paint the window panel here. This little garden bed that's on the second floor. That'll be gray. And then this window panel. Paint that. The window inside the, the frame will be brown, so we'll just stick to the outside panels. So far, so good. And then we have to paint this and this. This is just the wire going across. Okay, so we're good here. I can stop, take a moment, look at it. Okay, all looks good so far. Next, we can move on to the the all the greenery for the the flowers and the sh shrubs and the in the little flower beds. So we'll grab some green and we'll grab some yellow, make the, make the green a little more yellow. Grab a little bit of brown, give it a more, um, it, it makes it look less synthetic. Uh, I feel like when you add a little more brown to the green, it makes the green look more organic. That's probably the right word to use. So this is a good green that we have mixed here. gonna add some water to it because we don't want it to be so strong so that's probably good right there yeah I like that and we'll start right here this whole thing um, but we are going to leave some spots just white spots you can kind of make out the little blobs that are going to be flowers so and those are gonna be red flowers so we want to go ahead and go in and then just carefully just go in. And the blobs themselves obviously don't have to be 
perfect you can just kind of eyeball them and uh, make them as you wish so we're just going to go in and then kind of in between leave some spaces and plant matter in general has a certain amount of chaos to it and you can kind of play around with it so just leave some parts white and and you'll see when we start adding in the the red dots how it'll look much more complete it's hard to say but one of the things that i like about watercolor is that you can there's definitely a moment where you start seeing things kind of coming together um and that will definitely be the case for this piece okay we're just throwing that in okay and then same here and it's all basically the same green so that's the green that we will continue to use we will uh, just leave a little blob a white blob right there for that's going to be a, a red flower um we will mix a darker green when we go in to put in the shadows but for now we're just using this as a flat wash to outline the color of where all the plant life is in this piece same here just leave a couple of uh, a couple of white areas some white blobs okay and then this is all green so this and there's some green spots right down here this is all green and there's a green little tree right there in the alley and got that and then there's a shrub right here it's kind of like going over the door we got that and one up here one on this garden bed on the window and right here Okay, and all of these, and again, this is just a very flat wash. Don't worry about making it perfect. If there's some variability in the way that the color dries, that's also fine. It's not, it's not a big deal. I am leaving some spots here. There's some blobs, again, for flowers. And then up here. Like that. So that's that garden bed. And then over here, at the base of the windowsill, kind of climbing over. And then this right here. And the last one, I think, is this one right here. In the little baskets that's mounted to the wall. And we again, we will leave some white areas in here for the flowers. Rinse off our brush. Okay, looking good. You can see how it's starting to come together a little bit. Next, we will mix our brown for all of the areas in here. And we'll grab this brown. Just throw it down right here. And we'll actually, let's get a little bit of the green for the brown. There we go, that's probably perfect. Yeah, that's exactly the brown that I need. It's kind of like an old um, wooden, like, almost like an old wooden furniture or like a wooden uh, 
piece of a building you know how it gets old and worn out and it kind of like it's, it's not the it's, if you get this straight out of the pan it'll be much more vibrant so that's why we put in the green in there to kind of tone it down a little bit okay we'll go right here just right in that little spot and then just cover all that in Basically, the parts that you left white while coloring this building are going to be brown now. This roof, same thing. Over here, the edge of the roof. A little rafter connecting the roof. And then all of this, we'll go ahead and we'll paint it brown. We will go in and add some darker detail. Um, just not right now, since we're just leaving, we're just making the base wash. Okay, we got all of that. And we will, we will also leave like one, two, three little brown stripes right there. Okay, so that's looking good. This is all brown right here. And outline of the window. Make that brown. And then this is brown. And this right here. And we will get these little, I guess, um, pots. This one we'll leave alone since this one has more of an orange tone to it. So far so good. So this right here we'll do all brown like that. And then a brown line right there. And we will do some brown up here. And then there's these two windows that, that are kind of faint. Or window panes. It looks like they're closed, so we'll just get that in there. Put brown right here. Okay, so far so good. We'll do this whole thing on the inside is brown. Where we left it white. Just brown like that. And I think that's it. Looking at all of this, we'll do a, a little brown stripe right there with this little covering. Okay, so all of this is, all this is looking good. We'll rinse off our brush. Next, we want to, we want to meet, or uh, we want to paint uh, orange. We're, we're going to mix a little bit of orange For this sign, these pots right here, along with the baskets, they have a little bit more of an orange tone to them. And there's also some doors here in the distance that look kind of orange. So yeah, let's go ahead and we'll mix that. I'm just gonna switch this out. You could just clean out your plate with a paper towel or something, or I'm just gonna switch it out with my little porcelain plate. So we get some of this, this yellow, get a little bit of this red, kind of get a nice orange, maybe a little bit of the burgundy, let's see how that looks. A little red, yeah there we go, that looks, that looks like a good, good orange. Get some of water just to dilute it a little bit okay so first thing we'll do is we will get this right here this little pot it's orange this sign this sign right here got something on my brush 
this sign right here. Color it in. And same for this basket. And this little, little garden bed. Might pick up some off of it. And then color in this basket. Okay. I'm going to dry off my brush and maybe pick up some of this color. There we go. And maybe some of this as well. Okay, let's take a moment, take a look at it. Okay, so far so good. We will go ahead and lay down some orange flat washes down here in these little little rectangles that you see all the way in the back. And right here. Okay, so all of that. All that looks good. And yeah. So those are only the those are the only places that have orange in them. So next we move on to the red. So the red we're going to just lay, that's very bright. That's a very bright red. So we're going to kind of maybe dull it down with a little bit of a burgundy. Let's see. It looks a little strong. That's where a trusty scrap piece of paper comes in and not too bad i think it may be just the uh the glare maybe from my from my lamp um but that will still that will be st still very strong so what i'll do is i'll grab maybe a little bit of the green here throw it in just to kind of dull it down oh yeah see that's not good that's made it way too dark so I'm just gonna go over here get a little bit of red a little bit of this okay that's that's good that's sufficient so we'll go ahead and we'll put down right here and then little dots throughout the where we said that there were flowers that's where we're gonna put these little red dots same for right here just all throughout where you left white spots we're gonna fill them in with the red blobs for the flowers right there right there and just kind of go one by one patiently Like, just like that. Okay, there we go. Like that. One by one. And almost done with this little shrub. Or garden bed. Okay, perfect. Grab a little more red. And next, actually, I'm going to rinse it off a little bit and get a little more bright red, kind of like that. And we'll go ahead and we'll paint. There's a sign down here, and there's another sign right here. Kind of messed it up a little bit, but that's okay. And then right next to it there's a little door behind the pipe that we painted down and then there's a little red door right here
Okay. So that looks good. We have red here, red here. Cover that, that. Okay, that looks good. We're gonna rinse our brush. And switch back to these colors. So there's actually, I noticed, if we got a little bit of brown, we're gonna paint a little bit of brown in here, like that, and in here, like that, and that's that. Now while that is drying, we can actually just go ahead and grab some just black. I'm going to grab some black. I'm going to have to refill my black half pan here pretty soon. And what we will do is use this black and we're just going to go right in the little squares here. Just like that. Since it's during the middle of the day and I guess there's no no light coming in from behind these little window panes, it makes it look like it's uh, pitch black in there. Oh, and also these ones up here. Don't forget to get careful not to rub off the, uh, the part that's wet here. But basically just right in right in there and then you fill in at the base here of the window okay so that looks good and then just grab some more black and then just start filling these in And also just a sliver here on the side because it's kind of, um, it's one of those caved in window situations. Like it's got like rows and they're kind of at an angle. You can see it better on this side. It's going in like, ch -ch -ch -ch. I guess it's uh, for aesthetics. It's made that way. And over here. And just go one by one. Take your time. Okay. And that's that. And we're almost done with these windows down here. And then we can move on across the street there. Well, it's actually, there's more on the building next to this building. Okay, so that looks good. Next, we're gonna go right here. We'll go one line right here, and another line right here. And that's that. And then a little bit right here. And then maybe like a, just a dot like that. Cause there's windows there. And we're just trying to show that. Just like that. It's further back, so it's harder to get the details in. So I just kind of put in a dot. But a person's brain can, you know, they recognize what that is. S same as right here. Just very small dots. Kind of like short strokes. Just to show that this is, uh, this is where there's some windows. Okay, and same right here. Just like that. 
also also this one just a vertical st stroke right there right there right there okay there's two windows right here one like that and then one like that and over here one two just like that And you step back and take a look at it and you see how just the details really kind of bring everything together like you can you can make so much more out of the picture now now I'm kind of diluting this with the we had the grayish that we had down here I'm just kind of mixing it in making kind of like a dark mixing the dark that we used for here with the gray that the green blue green gray that we used for the wood parts and what I'm going to use that for is to give some outline to these planks here Just some horizontal strikes just to kind of help give it more definition and I'm gonna do the same for just the side of these planks here because that get, helps give them some depth and underneath here it helps give more dimension to the to the pieces that are already there Just like that perfect and I might even go go in and do it again like this piece right here just kind of help it stick out a little bit and do that again it just looks much better when you have the definition of the darker tones There we go. Rinse that off. And go over to the, the building back here. I'm just gonna do a little outline. I'm actually gonna darken this up, make it a little darker. It'll look better because it it'll dry much better if it's darker, since all of the colors dry light, like they lighten up as they dry. So we're gonna give that right there, and just a little outline. And I'm actually going to go back here and do a little more. Just like that. I'm going to go right here. Okay. Maybe a line over here. And a line over here. A line behind the pipe going down, going all the way down. And 
and then a vertical line right here behind one of the window panes another one for the panel right behind it and maybe some horizontal strokes right here to show the gradation I mean I'm sorry it's kind of like the grading I guess would be a better way to put it right here and right here looking good so far and then in the back right here okay oh also underneath the garden bed because it's darker to show the shadow and a line here in here and maybe also just to show because there's shadow from the plants in the garden bed okay so all of that looks pretty good next what we're gonna do is this brown that's here we're just gonna mix it in with the with the gray and it's nice and watery and we're gonna add more water to it so what we're gonna do next is we're, we're going to add the shadows that are on the building but before we do that I just realized we need to put shadows on all of the all of the green we need to emphasize the green so we're just gonna get some of this green and get some of the brown and that's good basically we're just gonna go in and put a shadow right here like that Because since the light is coming from the top, the the bottom part of the of the little garden bush is gonna be dark. So put all that in like that. So that's good. And just kind of like some sporadic strokes to make it look like there's texture as we're putting down these colors to emphasize or actually to put down a shadow for the for all the plants and go like that okay right here and basically we're just going where there's green and trying to give it some dimension I'm gonna need to mix some more green and brown and definitely need yellow there we go Maybe put a little more right there. A little more there. Putting on the second layer in the shadow helps add variability to the shadow and it actually makes it look a little more interesting to the eye. Okay, go right there. Same right here, right here, anywhere where you see little shrubs, just put down kind of like a shadow for where, um, you know, for where the shadow would fall. 
based off of the light coming from the top. Okay, so we're adding all that in. Down here. And you could just kind of like do horizontal strokes just like kind of sporadically and just kind of give it some definition. Like that. Okay. So now we're talking. Now it's looking a lot better. Put some here. Rinse off my brush. It's looking pretty good. I really like that. Now that we now that we got those shadows in, we're going to lay down shadows for the pavement from using this right here this mixture first we'll go ahead and we'll do just a little one right here then we're gonna go ahead and go like this and cut it off right there like that like that and like that we're gonna fill all that in Just like that. And then we're just gonna go like this and like that. Just more horizontal. And then we're gonna fill all of this in. You immediately get a better feel for the for the dimensions of of the whole painting. This we're gonna go up like this a little bit. And then we're gonna use the same to create a shadow right here. Just a wash. It makes a shadow. It's interesting to stop and look and see how much form that immediately gave the whole image. And then we'll do a little bit like this. Just to add more dimension to where a shadow would be falling. Okay. Sorry, my music had stopped. I had to go in and uh, put something else. All these, the paintings of sceneries always takes very, they take a long time. So it's always best to be just kind of like prepared to sit down, relax, and just kind of enjoy the process. Now, this whole side right here is all of it is in shadow um but we still have some green that's drying so instead of me just starting to put down the wash over everything uh, i'm gonna give that time to dry so that i don't mess it up and while that's happening i'm just gonna go in in certain areas where i want to outline and emphasize the dark parts so 
Oh, actually, much easier thing to do would be, I'm just gonna dry off an area right here. I'm just gonna get some of the blue. And I'm just gonna put in a quick wash. Mm. For the sky, I'm just gonna go right here. Like that. Maybe make it a little more blue. And like that. Something like that. And then I'm actually gonna pick up some of that so it dries lighter. There we go. That's good. And yeah, so now I'm just gonna go in and just emphasize some of the darks while the rest of it is drying. The way that I'll do that is I'll grab this one right here. Where, wherever you have more space on your plate, just grab the brown, grab the brown. Maybe a little bit of dark blue, a little bit of dark blue. Okay, so that looks good. And I'm gonna give some outlines. So we'll start right here, like that. Horizontal outline down here. Definitely up here where the um, roof is. And over here on that side. And then another a vertical outline right there the horizontal or kind of like going down outline like that and then another vertical outline right here and right here and in here okay It brings like the those dark outlines and just emphasizing the darks helps bring out the lights so much more and it just helps give so much life to the painting. Okay. Like that. And then maybe a little bit right here and right here. And then take a moment, look at it. It all looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna grab some more of this orange and it, my brush had a little bit of brown on it, and that's okay. Um, I'm just gonna grab this orange and then just kinda go like that, just to give it some texture. Make it a little more interesting. It would also have shadow on it too, so that helps. And a little bit down here. A little bit on this pot right there. And a little bit on this sign, maybe like this. And then look at it again, take a moment. Okay, all looks good. Um, we forgot to add, or I forgot I should say, I forgot to add the little colors for the flowers in here. And we will do that by getting some blue. A little bit of blue and a little bit of burgundy. Mix it in to make a nice violet. Violet color that looks good, and we're just gonna go just dot right there, right there, put it in right there, right there, and just like that, and then up here, just like that. Rinse off my brush. 
so it's good. So, yeah, all the green is pretty much dry here. Looks good. And we're just gonna wait for that little brown to dry right there. We're almost done. Switch off my plate. Okay, so I noticed that my shading color kind of mixed in here with the with the green. Um, that happens sometimes. <laughs> as long as it's mostly blue, which it is, and I just added a little bit of blue and more transparent, that's fine, because that's what we want. And I'm going to add a little more water to it, actually. And then I'm going to get my test paper. My scrap paper here. See how that looks. Maybe a little more water. Because we, we want it to be transparent because we want it to show the color and details underneath it. Get more water. Okay. So that's probably good. Yeah, that's good. This is the tricky part. If I had a large... Well, I do have a large brush. I, like This brush would be perfect to just do a quick wash over the whole area. But since I'm painting these to show that it can be done with just the use of the little brush that comes in the little kits that I sell, we're going to do it in sections. So just grab some of it. And first we're going to go up here with the, without going into the uh, garden bed. We're just going to go right like that. And then just laying it all down. Just like that. And then underneath the garden bed, we'll stop right here at the first horizontal panel. Go like that. And right here. So that's where we stop. The problem that we're trying to avoid is smearing all the underneath colors. Like this one, because it was more, I applied it more heavily pigmented, um, it rubbed off a little bit. Um, so, and it also blurs some of the image, but that can work to our advantage. I'll show you why in a moment. So we'll grab some more, and then we'll go ahead and we'll cover the... Cover the flowers here. There we go. And some vertical strokes here okay so you can tell that that looks like it's in shadow now which makes sense because it's casting a shadow down here going this way so we'll get some more and we'll just do a quick this way and get more Okay, I'm going to get a little more blue and mix it in because, yeah, my colors keep running down because my table is at a slant. So I'm just going to grab this and kind of cut it off here so it stops blending in with the green. Okay, that's good. Get more water. Okay, and then I'm trying to make my brush very wet and then going right in here on the side and then just going down. Don't go in the windows yet. Just kind of bring it down. Bring it down like that. 
The reason I'm saying don't go in the windows is because the the parts where it's all black are heavily pigmented and those will definitely run and that can that can cause some damage or it can it can blur up the painting a, a bit much. We don't want a lot, maybe a little bit but not a lot. So maybe just go in and then just get the lines that are lighter colored. Kind of try to go in between a little bit and just do it slowly because that'll help avoiding picking up the pigment underneath. See, I kind of did that right there. But if we do that slowly, we can make it happen. Okay, just like that. Okay, not too bad. Let's see, take a moment. That's fine. So we grab this and then we color right here. Just a broad stroke going down. Same, just going through. I'm gonna leave this right here light like that we're not gonna we're gonna we're not gonna cover this part because it's being hit by the light but the rest of it needs to be covered grab some of that like that all the way down just like that and then this right here this little shrub and this little pot everything okay and then put down right here like that so now the whole thing looks like it's in looks like it's in shadow on this side and so it looks much better but what we can do to remedy some of the parts that kind of got blurred is if we give it a moment to dry, let's see, give it a moment to dry. Now I might use like a dry part of my rag and then just kind of like press some of it. So while that's trying, what I can do is actually go in and further emphasize some dark areas, like grabbing some black, some blue, and dilute it a little bit, and maybe put in like some, like right there. Like that. And just kind of like wherever it looks a little too blurry, if you just go in and add some detail, it helps reestablish that definition. And then you can leave some parts of it blurry and some parts of it more defined. It actually makes it more interesting to look at. And also, it, it gives it a sense of realism because in real life, you actually, when a, when something is darker, it, it becomes fuzzier because it's harder to make out the details. So, yeah, like, something like that. Maybe a little down here. Maybe get the green going. Let's see, get a little bit of brown. 
make it nice and dark and then just go in just like that go over here right there and up here I know I know the video is getting kind of long but I mean we're pretty much done here I'm just giving you more options as to uh, give you an idea of what can be done but yeah let's see how that looks that's that's pretty much it so yeah I like how that looks it looks I, there's a lot of depth to it and there's some darks some some very dark areas some very light areas it, it's pretty dynamic actually I really like this one but okay yeah that's it for that one okay so thank you for sticking with me all the way through hopefully all that made sense if you have any questions feel free to just send me like shoot me an email website will be in the description um on instagram or here in the comments anywhere do you have any questions i usually try to reply within 24 hours um last week was just well the last two weeks have been completely off schedule just because um i got married um hopefully everything is working out for you if you purchase this from me um and i i appreciate you thank you i make everything by hand including the paints and the containers along with the coloring books and i will see you next time <laughs>